Hello there Transformers fans and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review. Today we are starting part one of our two part Wreck and Rule collection review. So this is the Wreckers. This is like, I, I think the first Wreckers subline Hasbro's ever done. Now they've done like a group of Wreckers in the past. Um, closest thing I can think of is the Fall of Cybertron repaints of the Combaticons where they did Wrecker counterparts. I mean, they, they did some slight remolding too. Those, those figures are actually uh, really awesome, I think. Um, and much like the statue there, uh, which resembles Emirate Zarin, um, the ruination mode of the Wreckers from the Fall of Cybertron video game, um, well, the toy line based off of the characters in the Fall of Cybertron video game because the Wreckers were not in the game. Um, the head mode, at least, of Ruination looked like em Emirate Zarin as well, which I thought was always something super cool. And Wreck and Rule Collection, that, that's just something that I never really realized I needed. Um, I know there's a lot of Wreckers fans out there. Wreckers have been a big part of Transformers since the Generation 1 comic, specifically the UK comic. And I even like that they they went back and touched back on some of those, like giving us a proper impactor. Now, I know some people are like, oh, great, another release of that impactor mold. But in my opinion, this is probably the best release of the impactor mold right here because it's the most G1 accurate. It's the closest thing we'll ever get to a G1 impactor since there was never a toy for him for that character to be based off of. He was a totally original character in the comic, and he was a cool one, you know? Um... But anyway, we, we've got various figures here. So we have two two-packs on the bottoms. So that's what we're going to start with with part one today. We're going to review both two-packs featuring um, Comic Universe Impactor and S Fossilizer Spindle. And then G2 Universe Leadfoot with Fossilizer Master Dominus. And then in part two, so stay tuned for part two. In part two, what we'll do, the other three, we'll do Prime Universe Bulkhead. Autobot Springer, which is based off of the G1 toy colors and based off of the G1 comics colors because they use the toy colors for the comics. And then, of course, we've got Diaclone Universe Twin Twist here. Um, no top spin, though. Really, really weird that Hasbro didn't do top spin. Um, there's, there, there's a lot of uh, grumbling amongst fans that we didn't get top spin. Top spin. Um, I mean, I'm a little disappointed we didn't get Top Spin yet either. I have a feeling Hasbro's just not going to leave it out there, not do one out of a pair and not do the other, especially since the mold for Top Spin already exists because these are just this is just a repaint of the Titans Return toy. Um, and I'm of the opinion that we totally should have gotten Top Spin instead of this guy right here. I Don't get me wrong. I like the Bulkhead figure. If you've watched my review of Legacy Bulkhead well, Legacy Prime Universe Bulkhead and RC together. Um, you, I hope you know that I like the figure, but I don't like the figure enough to warrant an immediate repaint and it being re-released as basically the same character just in camo. Um, it's cool, but I don't know. It just feels kind of like a waste to me, and I know another. I know a lot of other fans feel the same way. I mean, there's there's a lot of Transformers fans who were very vocal about not liking prime bulkhead just because it wasn't a update to the original prime bulkhead design it was a g1ized prime bulkhead design which i actually really like but i know a lot of fans didn't so i i feel like it was a very weird decision to do an immediate re-release so to speak just in camo of the same character that people were already kind of upset about i i don't know what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Um, what Who would you have rather seen in this guy's spot? I, I'd say it should have been Top Spin. If, if they did Twin Twist, it should have been Diaclone Top Spin. Um, and with that in mind, it should have been, it could have been the same size box. And di Top Spin and Twin Twist could have sat right here. And then Springer could have sat right here with the head of the um, Wreckers statue. That, that's that's how I see it, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, we're going to move these these three aside for now. We'll bring them back for part two. But for part one, we're just going to be reviewing 
these two. And they they really got us, or at least got me, very, very exciting, excited from the get-go with the Wreck and Rule Collection 1 because Hasbro announced that they're doing a, a Wrecker subline, which is just super cool. Um, Wreckers are basically the Special Forces unit, or a Special Forces unit, rather, of the Autobots. They do tougher jobs and live by a more looser grasp of rules than regular Autobots do. The other thing I like is the return of the Wreckers logo or insignia. Um, that's, that's something that's really cool with this Wreckers subline. Um, the only other time that I can recall that it had been officially placed on a Hasbro release product was, again, that uh, Fall of Cybertron Ruination set on the Ruination combined mode on Impactor. Uh, it does have the Wrecker insignia on the torso. So, really cool. Um, but here is Impactor and Spindle in the box. Love the artwork here. I'm at the end of the this two-part video. I'll post it on my Instagram too if you want to follow me. It's at Tripticonus. Um, I'll, I'll put that up or put it in the comments. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut all these faces off of these of these boxes because I just really really like the art that they did here. And I hope in the future they keep doing um, like piece together artwork like these with with packaging, especially with the sublines because this is like. It's just so cool. I mean, it's, it's just the coolest. Um, but yeah, box is awesome. Artwork's great. Figures look cool on the back. That's pretty much it for the box. I really love the fossilizers. If you watch the reviews I used to do back on the Bay 12 Facebook page before we moved over to YouTube, I did review a good amount of the fossilizers from the Kingdom line, and I like them very much. Um, I thought it was something really, really cool that Hasbro came up with, something totally fresh and new um, to add to the Beast era or Beast theme of Transformers. And I liked that they came up with a couple of new ones using similar molds um, from, you know, from, from Kingdom and making two totally new awesome fossilizers. Spindle was the figure I was most excited about in the entire Wreck and Rule collection, because the the T Rex mold was awesome, um, and a Spino. I mean, that's just way more awesome. Anyway, uh, this this two pack here comes with the main part of the hammer for the Wreck and Rule buildable cardboard hammer. That's another cool thing about this collection is each pack comes with one of the pieces. Bless you. Each pack comes with one of the pieces to build the Wreck and Rule collection hammer. And there we go, there's our, uh, there's, there's the main body of the hammer. So we will be building that for the duration of these two videos. Here is Impactor. And he's looking pretty good. I love that, that very G1 accurate comic head sculpt that they went with there. It looks awesome. I, again, I know some people were kind of like, great, another Impactor with this mold, but at the same time, it was a very long time coming that we got a very good looking impactor toy. And when we did with Siege, it was very exciting. The mold looked great and the design was awesome. But I'm glad that they went back and did a, did a proper G1 accurate looking impactor because it looks good. The, the colors are a little bit brighter than the Siege mold. Um, the gold's a little bit more pronounced, I feel. And I like, I like the... Uh, like the shiny metallic plastic that they went with for the head. It's a little bit different from the rest of some of the gold plastic, but I like it. Next up here is Spindle. Little little bit different from uh, from Paleo Trex or I forget the purple one, the clear purple one's name or uh, the repaint in slash remold into transmutate wasn't really a fan of that transmutate. I'll I'll stick with the uh, with the tenth anniversary build a figure. It's more Beast Wars accurate. So there's that. And here we have in the tissue paper their accessory. So we have uh, Impactor's hook hand. So you can just like with the other one, rotate this around. 
peg in his hook hand because he has a hook hand. Here's his blaster rifle. Peg that to that hand. And there is impactor. And then uh, there's the tail slash sword weapon thing for spindle. And just like just like the other fossilizers, um, spindle completely disassembles to be reassembled in its Spinosaurus skeleton mode. And you could also break it apart, much like with um, the whole weaponizer. Oh, I just pulled his arm apart in not the correct way. Um, you can, you know, take him apart and give impactor here some like cool armor bits or even split some of his parts into weapons like for example you could take this and this use your imagination a little bit and now impactor has like a really cool looking axe and that was that was the other really cool and fun thing about um about the fossilizers was the, the combinations and just cool things you could do with them made, made it so cool, aside from having s skeleton transformers. Like, aside from that as a new concept, it, it just made it so much cooler. So you can see uh, Spindle here completely disassembles. Um, you can, again, mix and match parts, just peg stuff on in random places for extra armor or whatever um, I should have compared him before I disassemble it we'll, we'll reassemble him real quick it only takes a moment now spindle does have unlike the other fossilizers he's not a maximal or a predicon he is a wrecker and he does have his shiny blue metallic wrecker insignia right there on his left shin and that was the other cool thing about the uh, the wreck and rule collection is rather than have the, you know, the classic Autobot and Decepticon insignias, they have the Wreckers insignias, and they're not just like flat or a matte blue color. They are metallic and really, really cool looking. Go ahead and get his. It, as you can see, it doesn't really take much time at all to reassemble these guys. And they're fully articulated while assembled. So articulation on spindle, head is on a swivel joint because that's just a peg that pegs in right there. Um, but his head, his neck is also on a hinge. So you can rotate a little bit. Fully articulated shoulders, in and out. You have a bicep joint here. You have an elbow joint right here. You have a wrist joint. You have a hinged wrist joint. And I just pulled that apart again. Um, and then the toes flex for his finger joints in robot mode. Waist, hips, upper thigh, single jointed knees, and then you have this kind of side joint right here, right below the knee, and that's mostly due to, uh, well, actually that one's not really due to tra transformation so much. Well, I guess it kind of is, because that's supposed to be his dino mode hip. It's an interesting joint. And then uh, the, the heel on the back rotates as well. Now that one is due to transformation because you plug the leg directly into that bit. So there you go. And then you can also articulate the dino mode arms. They're on a ball joint while uh, they're on his hips. Okay, so for comparison, let's go ahead and compare him to, where is, um, I'm not going to pull out all of the other ones, all the other Paleotrex, well, Paleotrex, all the other repaints of Paleotrex. Again, that was um, the clear purple one. I can't remember the name of the clear Someone comment that, please. Comment the name of the clear purple one. Um, and I don't have Transmutate because, like I said, I've got the Build-A-Figure. I mean, it's more Beast Wars accurate, which I, I care about ac show accuracy more than... Um, I care about having another T-Rex fossilizer. So anyway, a uh, lot of subtle differences between Paleotrex and Spindle here. 
there are some similar parts, um, but the biggest differences are, of course, the spine here. Um, the This is actually the pelvic area of the T-Rex mode. The head is completely different. This one has a T-Rex head that hangs on the back. This one just has a lower jaw that hangs on the back, and the upper jaw of, or an upper part of the spinosaur skull is part of the head joint, whereas with Paleotrex here, Paleotrex's head is completely removable and doesn't really hinder transformation so much. This just kind of helps keep the head, in, dino mode head in place while it's in um, fossil mode. Um, but this one's head becomes a mace, which is super awesome. And this one's head, I mean, come, becomes, I guess, like a jaw, maybe even a saw-like weapon. Again, you get to use your imagination with the fossilizers. It's pretty cool. Um, other than that, it, it, it's pretty much exactly the same. I mean, this one's got the little T-Rex arms on the hips. This one's got spinal arms on the hips. And I don't think there's any other differences in this mold. Uh, well, part of the Spinosaur spines right there, and that's a little different. But whole, wholesale, it's pretty much the same mold. But I subscribe that they did a really great job recreating this into this and making it a whole new character i really like that now for comparison if you want to see him next to some of the other ones here is spindle next to the triceratops and wing finger there you go so there's the four different ones so far far before we get to Master Dominus. Oh, I almost forgot Vertebrake. There we go. So here's the five unique molds we have so far. Again, I'm not going into all the crazy recolors and stuff. They're just repaints. But here's the five different molds we have so far. So we've got a uh, Pterodactyl, a T-Rex, Spinosaur, Triceratops, Raptor, and Mastodon coming up. Pretty much it for those guys. Here, I'm just going to set them there so they're closer. There we go. All right, so since we're still playing with uh, Spindle here, we'll go ahead and transform Spindle. So re-disassemble him. Take the sword out. Take that off. Take that off. Just completely take him apart. I wonder if they make, if, if, if uh, in Transformers lore, because they haven't really appeared in any fiction yet, but I wonder if in uh, fossilizer lore, if they were to, if someone was to like blast a fossilizer and it were to fall apart, I wonder if it would make the sound that Dry Bones makes in the Mario games. Now, it reassembles pretty much just like Paleo Tracks. It's pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bits here, we're gonna line up the spine. There you go. There's the whole Spinosaurus spine for you right there. Next up, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna extend these bits all the way out. We're gonna take these and we're gonna plug them right there. Those are his hips. Plug those on, plug that on. I'm gonna take, where did I put his tail? Oh, there it is, it's blending in. Um, take his tail, take that, plug that on, take that. Plug that on, his tail is all done. Take these legs over here. I put that one on backwards, it's this leg. Put that on, take this leg, put that on. And then just keep removing that. That mushroom peg is very loose. It just keeps on coming off on mine. There we go. And then we're almost done. We're gonna go ahead and just put that head down in there. Just plug that in. Yeah, that looks awesome. And last but not least, we've got the chest of spindle here. We're going to rotate that section all the way down. There's a couple of tabs on either side. There's a couple of little holes on the inner side of the robot mode thighs, and we're just going to plug it in on one side, wrap it around, plug it in on the other side, and that's pretty much spindle all done. Once we add the little chest plate, 
right there. And there you go. There is Spindle. Now it's all about just posing Spindle however you like, getting him to stand. Here we go. Can be a little wonky. There's like so many points of articulation. Oh goodness. And then of course the arm likes to keep coming off. Here we go. And, and he, he can stand pretty tall in, uh, in, his, in his Spinosaurus mode. He can stand, he can stand pretty, pretty tall, pretty low. Like I said, you can, get, you can get some awesome, awesome poses out of this guy. I'm I'm a big fan of that, and I and I'll, again I love how they matched the uh, the color scheme of Spindle to Impactor here. Now they didn't do that with Master Dominus and uh, G2 Leadfoot, but it, it's still overall the colors just look really awesome. All right, we're gonna set him aside. Next up, we're gonna come over here to Impactor. So Impactor looks really great. Again, we were talking about his uh, new head sculpt and all that good stuff. They also Re remodeled the new chest. Um, it's it's a little bit more pronounced, like in Generation One, versus Siege. So for comparison, here is Siege Impactor. Here is, excuse me. Here is G1 Comics Impactor. And as you can see, he's a little bit more brighter purple, a little bit more prominent gold, whereas this one was just more of a, almost like a mustard yellow and a dark purple. Like a, almost like a plum, if you will. Still, very cool. Uh, basically the same mold, though. Head is on a ball joint. You have this hinge joint right here for the shoulder cannon, fully articulated shoulders, upper biceps, single jointed elbows. S oh, I thought the wrist did swell. I guess they don't. But they can rotate in and out for you to attach different weapons and other things on there if you so choose, like his hook hand over here. And I liked how they gave you the option because he doesn't always, he didn't always have a hook hand. He replaced his hand with a hook after his regular hand got cut off. Now, Transformer characters can replace their limbs. They do so all the time. Usually replacing a hand isn't super difficult, but it was more of a statement than it was um, a necessity, I think. Anyway, uh, waist joint, hips, l right above the knee, and then single jointed knee. And then you got those side ankle joints. You've got this kind of midfoot joint, but that's mostly due to transformation. And that's pretty much it for Impactor. He, his transformation is pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here. There's this back plate right here. We're going to open that up. We're going to rotate this head around. We're going to push it down, and then we're going to close that back plate right back up. And then we're going to fold the shoulder cannon over, like so. We're going to take this hook hand off. We're going to come over here to the other hand. We're going to fold it inward. And then we're going to bring this chest section up. And we're almost done, actually. Next, we're going to fold in those feet, bring them out to the side, rotate this leg section up, and then there's an ab a little hinge joint right here where the hips meet the uh, waist. We're going to unclick out of place the waist and then just bring it forward and then we're going to tab the front sections of this tank together, bring those legs all the way back, rotate those legs in or feet in and they don't really, they don't really uh, line up super great so you got you got to watch where you're lining them up so you can tab them in to the back of the waist because it's easy to miss come on like i said it sometimes has trouble lining up and now the second one doesn't want to there we go and there you go you get that all lined up 
And then what we do next is the shoulder joints are also on a hinge. We're gonna rotate those arms downward, rotate them back so that this section is facing up. And then we grab his rifle here. These two pegs right here aren't just for show. Um, it does, oh wait, no, these pegs are for show. It's these peg holes that aren't for show. You tab them in right here in between his arms. So just squeeze those together and then the tank barrel articulates up and down. And then these tabs right here tab into the top of the sides of the forearm there. That way it's nice and all one piece. And there you have Impactor in his tank mode. So in case you hadn't, hadn't picked up any version of this mold, um, maybe you just kept on missing it out. I mean, it got, it got re-released a few times. Um, I'm gonna put his hook here. That's usually where it's shown off in the images and instructions. You can put it in different places though. Um, but yeah, this is your first time picking this mold. I recommend this version. This is probably my favorite release of this mold just because again, it's the most G1 accurate. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like Siege Impactor a lot. This is a great figure. And I love the design of it. I love the head sculpt. Um, this, this is the, I think this was the Netflix box release where they changed it to an Autobot insignia. But um, yeah, I, I really liked the head sculpt. I really liked what they did when they, when they molded Impactor, but um, I, I just prefer the G1, G1 Acura one. Okay, so that's it for Impactor and Spindle here. I mean, any Decepticon seeing that approaching is probably just gonna run the other way. Unless it's like a phase sixer or, a, you know, Megatron. All right, so here's the other box. Uh, we have Master Dominus and G2 Universe Leadfoot. That was really cool. Um, I like how they keep sneaking in G2 Universe figures into the Legacy line. Um, we, we got a few in the Netflix trilogy set, uh, set of figures, but more and more Hasbro's just kind of piecing in little G2 figures. I mean, Wave 1, we got Laser Optimus. Wave 2, we got Jaxus. Um, I don't know if we're getting one in Wave 3, but Velocitron, we've got Road Rocket. G2 Leadfoot, we've got G2 Core Class Megatron coming here pretty soon as well. So they just keep on sneaking in little G2 figures. And I wouldn't be surprised if after all is said and done, we have the full set of um, Legacy Stunticons out if we get a G2 Menasaur box set again like we did in Combiner Wars. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. It would be cool too, because um, so far Menasaur was really awesome. If you haven't watched that review, go check that out. And um, Dragstrip was also pretty awesome, so there you go. Anyway, here is uh, the, the, the other two pack with Leadfoot and Master Dominus. Again, the artwork is really awesome on the back. Shots of the figures, and that's pretty much it for the packaging and we get the base the display base for our hammer here so this is the little platform that the hammer sits on and I, and I like how easy it is to uh, put these together. So for this one, we're just gonna go ahead and put that display base together since it's all one piece. Fold in those. It's like making a box. I mean, we're basically making a little box here. There you go, that, that, that's one side all done. Fold those in. And there you go. We got the display base all done. Set that to the side for part two. Here is G2 Leadfoot. And this is a repaint and slight retool of the um, Kingdom Earth Mode Mirage that was released. And in the 
tissue paper here. We've got their weapons. We have Master Dominus's tusks. Wait, am I doing that? Yeah, I'm doing that right. Wait, yeah, I'm doing that right. So those plug in right there, which is also really cool because I believe, yep, this section untabs and he can wield his tusks like a weapon which or a shield kind of funny that the tusks of the uh, mastodon oh his arm came off mastodon figure can come off and be used as a shield interesting they also colored him black and gold which is also very interesting that Hasbro produced a black mastodon if you will fossilizer figure so if we'll, if we'll do a head count real quick, we've got a Mastodon, a Pterodactyl, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and a Triceratops. We need a saber-toothed tiger, Hasbro. Because now i got to build the Fossilizer Megazord. That, that's got to happen. Fork Pearson, here he is next to the figure he was remolded from. They did add a couple of new pieces aside from the little bit of remolding they did. So they did a new, a totally new head mode um, for obviously the Mastodon mode, but they also added these little extension pieces for when he's in Mastodon mode because Mastodons have longer legs than Triceratops. So there you go. I like to put them on the ends of the hands here. Um, you could also put them here. Actually, that looks that kind of looks a little bit better. I was never really crazy about how they did the hands on this mold, um, just giving it pegs on on that side. It just uh, just looks weird to me. And he is fully articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Fully articulated shoulders in and out. Single jointed elbows that do rotate. Actually, I guess you kind of have two elbow joints, sort of. Um, this peg rotates. This peg does not. You do have a peg hole on the back in case you want them to just hold something straight up, but it just it looks wonky. Um, waist, hips, upper thigh, which comes off because that's not a peg. Single jointed knees, side ankle joints, and that's pretty much it for articulation. Transformation into his Mastodon mode. Just like with Paleotrex, you're going to disassemble him all the way. Actually, didn't need to disassemble him, uh, disassemble him completely because I just remembered some of those parts were already in the right place. But that's okay. Um, we're going to take this head cover here. We're going to fold that down so we cover his head. We're going to turn this over. We're going to... Disconnect that because I forgot to disassemble that part. And then we're going to extend that tail, plug in his butt, come over here. Where did I put? Oh, that's right. He doesn't have the, the tail weapon. Unless he's supposed to, and mine just didn't come with it. But yeah, he doesn't have the tail weapon. He just has a, a stumpy tail at the end. We're going to take the hips here. We're going to plug them right into that socket there like so and we're gonna take the larger legs those are gonna plug in pretty much where they were which is why I said I didn't really need to fully disassemble him but I did anyway next we're gonna take those leg extensions we're gonna plug those basically back where I had them in robot mode and then we're gonna take those front legs here those are gonna plug in right there fold it Make sure you fold down those pegs so he can stand properly. Like so. And then you just take the head, connect it right there, and he's all done. And again, super cool. Uh, another really great reuse of a currently of what was already currently a really cool mold in my opinion. Um, I like the metallic gold in 
paint in various spots. However, I wish all the gold paint, that is so loose. I wish all the gold paint matched. Uh, like for example, you've got a nice coat of gold paint right here, but then the gold plastic they printed or molded him into for the spine of the regular torso is completely different. So I kind of wish they kind of just went over that with the same gold paint that they painted right here and right here on the chest. Man, that neck joint's super loose too. He also had the metallic blue insignia, although it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to see. It doesn't stick out very well when it's a similar, almost like a similar um, shininess. It, it blends in really well with this gold paint. Um, I, I really dig the black. I love the red highlights on the inner parts of the ribs and and I love I love the silver paint they did on the mastodon feet right here at the bottom I think I think the silver paint really accentuates accentuates that well that's the word I was trying to use there and that's pretty much it for master dominus for comparison here he is next to spindle and they look super super awesome Articulation is much the same in this mode. Um, he also has a jaw that opens and closes. Love that. That is so cool. Set him to the side. And here is Leadfoot. So Leadfoot comes with a the same weapons that the Earth mode Mirage comes with. Same rocket launcher. Same rocket. That peg. That unpegs, same blaster rifle. The difference here is the, of course, color scheme here. He's in the color scheme of G2 Leadfoot, but uh, different to that, he has the Wreckers emblem instead of the G2 Autobot insignia. Here he is next to Earth Mode Mirage for comparison. And I, I really liked Earth Mode Mirage. Um, for the most part, I mean, they didn't quite leave a good spot for his shoulder cannon to peg in like it's, you know, because it's supposed to sit over his shoulder. And they didn't fix that with this mold either. But it's still, I think, a pretty good figure. So, uh, lead foot's pretty cool. Fully articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Fully articulated shoulders, upper biceps, single jointed elbows, in and out on the wrist, mostly due to transformation, waist, hips, upper thigh, single jointed knees, and you've got that side ankle joint. The, the toe, the front of the foot can move forward and back, uh, but that's mostly due to transformation. I also really like the metallic blue paint they went with, but again, much like with Master Dominus, much like with... Um, impactor here much like with spindle i really wish that they just either cast it in all the same color plastic uh, for the parts that are supposed to be blue or yellow or use the same paint on those areas because his hips are or his hips his waist is just kind of like a flat blue color but then his thighs his uh, shins are like this really cool metallic blue color it just doesn't match. It looks. It just kind of looks out of place. Same with the head up here. Um, they they tried to color match the head to the plastic that they just cast him in, but it's it's very noticeably different. And why not just cast the head mold in the same color plastic? I don't know. I don't. Know. Other than that, still a really cool figure. I love all the G two callbacks there with uh, the ins with all the numbers and things and the stripes that G2 Leadfoot had. Um, I've seen some people 3D printing the wheel the, or spinning disc or fan blade or whatever you want to call it that he launches on the original G2 toy. I've seen them mold it to where it just kind of pegs into his launcher here, which that is super cool. I kind of wish Hasbro just did like a disc that pegged in or little fan thing that pegged in um, to the blaster not necessarily launch out of it but pegged into the blaster just to kind of recreate that because I think that would have been really cool had Hasbro done that as a replacement for this rocket or include the rocket too. It's, the rocket's cool don't get me wrong um, 
but he should have he should have had the, the the fan blade disc launching thingy. That would have been way cooler. All right, transformation is pretty simple, just like the Earth Mode Mirage. Uh, we're gonna come over here with the arms. We're gonna fold in those fists. Fold in those fists. Rotate. And I guess we'll have to wait till those arms are out of the way to rotate that in. We're gonna come over here to his back. Fold that down. Unpeg these arms from the sides of the body. Fold out those wheels. Fold in that head. That's gonna be the back of the vehicle. Peg that into place. Bring these arms back like so. And we're gonna come back to this in a moment. We're gonna go to the legs next. Okay, so for the legs, we're going to pull this section up. It's on a double hinge. It's on a double hinge right there. We're going to pull this section up, fold in or rotate in that foot so the foot is kind of flush with that. And then pull the wheel section completely off, but don't do that. Don't actually do that. Sometimes it just pops out of place when you're trying to articulate it. Okay, fold that all the way around like so. Rotate that thigh so that this is facing like so. And then just kind of bring that leg all the way up and straighten it out. Now we're going to straighten out that, I guess, back joint, spine joint, kind of, like that. And then there's a little tab right here. There's a little slot right here that's going to tab in right there. Rotate that around. Bring that. Fold in that foot. Kind of get it out of the way. Rotate this out, extend it, and now we can peg those together. Stretch that all the way down, peg that into that side, line all that up, and that's pretty much the front of the car all done. Now all we have left is the arms. So bring those arms up, like so. Face them in the middle. Rotate the spoiler to the side, and I did not say this was going to be a spoiler-free review, so if you, this was spoiled for you, I'm so sorry. Line those up, peg those together. Line those arms up, peg those together, and then just push, push this section. And I guess you got to push it down first and then assemble it. There we go. Okay, that was easier. Push it down first, then assemble it. My bad. Skip the step there. That'll sit flush with that. And there he is in his car mode. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Awesome, awesome piece, awesome car mode. Again, just like, uh, just like old Mirage here, and then you can put his blasters on. You got a couple of pegs here on the side of the driver's seat area. Just peg it down. There you go, and, and it, it looks pretty sweet with the uh, with the weapons on there. Definitely not my favorite of these four, not my favorite of the set, because again, I think this one is my favorite of the entire Wreck and Rule collection. I'm a sucker for the fossilizers. What can I say? But of the first two two packs, it's 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 a pretty awesome set so far. So. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to part one of the two-part Wreck and Rule collection review. Make sure you guys stay tuned for part two, because in part two, we're going to review G1 Colors, what G1 Toy Colors, Springer. We're going to be reviewing Camo, Prime Bulkhead, and we're going to be reviewing Diaclone, Twin Twist. So, some really awesome figures coming, and then we're also going to finish assembling the Wreck and Rule Hammer. So, stay tuned for all that. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Follow us on social media. Stay tuned for more content. We do all kinds of other different content here on Bay 12 all the time. Marvel, DC, Joes, um, sometimes Alien, Predator, Turtles. 
and we review all the kinds of different companies all the time. So stay tuned for more. Watch out for some convention coverage as well and maybe some interviews in the future. And we'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Wreck and rule.